Hello everyone. Today's video is going to be about installing a booster board into the Proxmark 3. So what is the booster board? Well, it is a board that replaces the middle board of the Proxmark and it has integrated into it a tank circuit. And that tank circuit acts as a kind of concentrator and repeater of the field that comes from the HF antenna on the bottom of the board. Ultimately though, it kind of reshapes the field and makes it more uh, conducive to reading implants, particularly X-Series and Flex uh, devices. So uh, we're going to show you how to install that board today. What you're going to need is uh, at least a hex driver, a 1.5 size bit. Uh, and I like to also use a little pair of pliers just because some of the, the standoffs, the risers are a little bit tough to get out of there. Um, let's see if I can find it. Here it is. So it's my 1.5 bit. Get out of there. Okay, let's stick it in here. And uh, so when you take apart the board, what I like to do uh, is basically put the screws next to where they go so that they're kind of in order and, and in the right place. And the Proxmark has uh, six screws you have to take apart uh, or take out. And effectively, these two screws at the bottom end here, oh, I've already lost a screw. Oh, there it is. <laughs> there. Uh, these two screws are shorter than the other four. So um, not a big deal, but just kind of important to remember when you're putting back together. So get to the other screws on the low frequency antenna. And you'll notice the low frequency antenna has these chevrons. And oh, come on, little screw. Uh, these chevrons are indicating where the LF antenna coil connects to the board. So these are actually active electronics that are using the posts, the metal standoffs, as conductors. So it's important to put this board back with the chevrons pointing to these middle two uh, posts and not put it upside down. Otherwise, your LF antenna will not work anymore. Get the last screw here. And carefully. So um, there we go. So this mid board here, uh, which is called the mid board, middle board, it really doesn't do anything electrical. It, all it does is it acts as a standoff and it, it basically keeps the electronics here all on the main primary board on the bottom. It keeps some space between those and the LF antenna just to kind of reduce noise. Um, so you can actually completely remove the middle board and just put the LF antenna just on the first set of risers. Um, off the primary board, but there's noise and it, you kind of reduce the performance of the LF antenna that way. So um, let's see. Well, I'm going to need a little more convincing to get those loose. There we go. And these ones too. Okay. And there, comes loose. So yeah, it's just a PCB with some holes and some fancy stuff on it, but electrically inert, doesn't do anything really. And we're gonna put the booster board in place here. Well, if I could get the standoffs to go into the screw hole here. Small parts. Okay. So you can see on the board itself, the booster board has some indicators here and uh, it just kind of shows you where the actual coil is, the inductive coil inside and approximately where you can place different types of uh, implants. So X-series, again, cylindrical antennas, so they must be perpendicular across the coil uh, and then flex can be parallel to the coil, so running in line with the coil. We're going to tighten these up, Let's go the right way here. Okay, and we'll put the LF board again. Uh, make sure that the chevrons are pointing to these middle and not, not like that, but like this. I'm going 
Put screws in place. It doesn't really matter the order, but I like to go corners when doing this kind of thing where there's an alignment. two final screws, the, the shorter screws. Oop. <laughs> Put our little bit back. Okay, and that is how you do it right there. Booster board installed. Okay, now we're going to do a comparison between the Proxmark with the booster board installed and the Proxmark without, so stock Proxmark. I've got them both hooked up here, and we'll take a look at the screen. Now, when you have two or more Proxmarks uh, set up on your on your computer, um, you're going to notice that you're you're not going to use the PM3 script to launch. You need to actually use the client to specify the port. And if we look at uh, Device Manager here, I can see I know that these two devices are the Proxmarks. And uh, so I got a COM4 and a COM9. I'm not exactly sure which is which. We'll find out here shortly. So we'll launch that client on COM4 and we'll launch this one on COM9. And let's do COM9. We're going to do HF 14A reader. And I want to just uh, continually loop. And if I look, that is the uh, that is the Proxmark with the booster board installed. So I'm going to kind of move them around to match the screens here. So there we go. Booster board on the right stock on the left. We'll get this one going. Whoops. 14A reader mode loop. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to test a flex NT uh, with the stock and then the booster board just to see what the difference is in performance. So let's take a look here at the stock Proxmark. I'm going to move that out of the way here. And we're going to have the flex NT and we're just going to approach the middle board dead center um, and we'll take a look. So we have to be pretty close. If we're, if we're a little bit off, I would say four millimeters, we're getting a lot of collisions and unstable reads. Uh, get a little closer, three millimeters, we're getting stable reads. So I'd say three millimeters off the middle board of the stock Proxmark is, is an accurate representation of read range on the stock one. So let's take a look at what we get with the uh, booster board installed. So Again, we're going to kind of approach it dead center and we're getting reads way out here. So that's, that's well over, I would say it's close to two centimeters. Unfortunately, the markings on my mat are in Imperial. Those are half inch marks, but we're pretty close to centimeters. So that, that is a dramatic improvement we can see. Um, yeah. So the, the booster board really does work. Um, so let's now test with an X series. And I just have an X series here on a little zip tie that I've epoxy resin to the end just for easy testing. And again, we're gonna want to go parallel, or no, sorry, perpendicular to the coil. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing, kind of dead center, but, but offset a bit, just so we can get an idea. And this is the booster board performance. So we're gonna approach it. And we're getting reads at what I would say to be about a, a centimeter. Pretty good. A centimeter off the, the booster board. Uh, now we're to take the stock Proxmark. We'll do the same thing. We'll approach it. And we have to get pretty close. Actually, we are <laughs> touching it. I'm going to flip it around so it gets even closer. So the zip tie is not between. Ooh, we're we're getting some some there, but it's not, not a stable read whatsoever. And this illustrates perfectly why, uh, under normal circumstances, if you want to read any X-series implant with your Proxmark, you're going to have to approach it from the backside because the actual HF antenna is on the bottom. So you can see it has to pretty much be contacting, almost contacting, yeah, uh, maybe a millimeter between, and it's not very stable. Um, so that means, you know, if you're trying to get a read like through your skin, uh, it's going to be pretty rough. I mean, you can see it's reading my X and T kind of, 
but let's take again we'll put the booster no problem no problem at all so very easy to get a read with my xnt so that's the booster board performance for you it's great so that's how you install the Proxmark 3 booster board for the Proxmark 3 Easy. As you can see, the performance is vastly improved with the booster board installed, uh, which is why we sell them uh, pre-installed as an option. So check it out today at dngr.us slash pm3.